Hello, and you are back in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. This is our 67th episode, and today we'll be discussing rising tensions leading to kinetic force and gender ideology being used to polarize the culture. So, we're going to jump right into it. I've got these two articles pulled up, one from the El Paso Times, which is the first one I'm going to get into, and it's El Paso Judge Orders Release of Migrants Accused of Border Riot. So, uh, there was an El Paso magistrate judge on Easter Sunday ordered the release of migrants accused in a border riot uh, when they stampede and overwhelm National Guard troops along the Rio Grande. And this is a bit of a long article. It will be linked below if you want to go. But this was a, a big riot. Arrests in the hundreds and the judge just let them go. And this is one of the um, issues that I do have with well, this whole border uh, nonsense going on. A lot of libertarians will say, you know, borders are an anti-libertarian position and you shouldn't believe in imaginary lies and all these sorts of things. There is reality. If you want to have a country that functions, that's what you need in order to have a better, more freer society. And if you want a volunteer society, you need to have a high trust culture. And when you have stuff like this happening where people can just come from anywhere uh, destroy um, your country uh, physically and also economically being economic migrants and doing all these sorts of things. It creates problems that really ought to be resolved. And Texas is not nearly as based as people think it is because this is an El Paso judge. This is in Texas. It's right on the edge of Texas and New Mexico. I've been to El Paso. It's a border town. It's definitely not the richest place in the world. Uh, but these judges, the justice system is inherently broken. They can be bought and sold, and this is a very intentional destruction of the country, and I am sympathetic with conservatives. Oh, oh my God. Uh, yes, very shocking. I, I Doc is going, if Doc listens to this, he's going to like have a double take. But well, listen to me. I, I am sympathetic with conservatives when they you can hear the ruling that these people can own guns, right? Um, but they get to uh, flippantly break the laws and do these sorts of things and really degrade the, the quality and the trust of our society while if you have half an ounce um, of a bottle too big in TSA, you're, you're going to get groped, right? It's just uh, the double standard is ridiculous and the double standard applies, um, the worst parts of this double standard applies to the people who are law-abiding citizens. The people who pay their taxes on time every year, follow every law, get their licenses renewed, um, do everything by the books. They're the ones who, who get the boot put on them the, the most. The ones who are going to get arrested first. The ones who don't get to have any say uh, in what the government does. It's these people that just get to come in. They get uh, the welfare. They get to um, be part of the agenda that's being um, pushed to uh, explicitly destroy this country. All this you know, stuff with squatters and all this. And I think a lot of this is honestly a PSYOP. It's being pushed onto the people. It's being an explicitly done thing to, again, build this low-trust, violent culture that we find ourselves in and to exacerbate the problem. And I think part of what is indicative of the fact that we have this low-trust, highly polarized culture is this headline from Evolve, New Evolve News, Far Left Rioters Storm Easter Vigil. So there was demonstrators chanting Palestine must be free, silence equals violence. This was in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. On Easter Sunday, which was March 31st, 2024, and hopefully you had a good Easter, a little bit of a better Easter than the people in St. Patrick's were going on. But this is the issue with just going full throttle of um, everything is awful, it's always the worst, you have to, you know, be... You know, we have nothing to lose but our chains sort of mindset. You get people doing like this. You get no respect for your fellow man. There's no willingness to sit down at the table and hash these things out. It's you're a genocidal maniac and I have to get you to acknowledge that silence equals death. And there's a genocide going on in an open air uh, prison. And not to say that what um, Gaza is going through is a, isn't a bad thing or that the IDF is something that I should is an organization that's worth defending. I don't think so. It's just that, like I've said before, to take a passionate side in the Israel-Gaza conflict when you're literally half a world away and you have nothing to do with it makes no sense. Now, if you want to engage in humanitarian aid, that's a very admirable thing. It's just, it's extremely hard to do, to go through the typical channels for humanitarian aid and expect that money and those resources to actually end up 
to the people who need them, right? Because if you send stuff to Gaza, uh, well, airdropping stuff is a risk, and a lot of that stuff is just going to end up in the hands of Hamas, and Hamas isn't really interested in helping the average Gazan. They're just interested in expanding their own power and having complete and total control because that's just that's just how it is. It's really just a power play, and a lot of this comes over the fact that Israel and Gaza, that area of the world, is in a very geographical, a geographically beneficial uh, position, being um, by the Mediterranean Sea, that a warm water part that lets you go through the Suez Canal, and then you can trade with the entirety of the world there. And the Americans want to control that area so they can have their forward operating base for their empire building in the Middle, Middle East, and of course... Um, the uh, countries in the Middle East don't want that, but they don't want Palestine to be a country. So it's a very complex issue. And you going into a vigil above, of a uh, cathedral in New York and doing stuff like this, where, where you're pulling this nonsense of trying to disrupt it and saying silence equals uh, death and Palestine must be free, does absolutely nothing. It really just makes people more enraged and more... Uh, polarized, right? It's not going to be an effective way of pushing your message across, of getting people to your side. It's really just going to divide people and further entrench people in whatever side of this issue that they find themselves on. Whether you support the IDF in Israel or whether you uh, support Gaza and, well, not, not Hamas, but whether you support Gaza and Palestine and you're of that persuasion. And another <clears throat> thing that is polarizing society, if you're sticking with me, like, uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. But talking about polarization and Easter, we have this thing from the White House. The Transgender Day of Visibility is being pushed on Easter. That's what they're really going for and acknowledging. Uh, it was a couple days before where they had this whole spiel of uh, the Transgender Day of Visibility. Like, I see you, you're made in God's image, yada, yada. Of course, a lot of people had these very typical takes on it and you know saying it's bad and how could you do this on easter and all, all this stuff but i'm coming here with my tinfoil hat on as i always do and since we we're just talking about polarization i think this is definitely something that's being pushed onto the population to polarize society not just gender ideology in general and this is i'm working on the non-fiction book i'm pretty deep into the manuscript and i've gotten uh done on how gender ideology harms society and one of the things that i mentioned I guess a bit of a spoiler, is that this is an issue that's being pushed onto the people and it polarizes the culture. So the fact that gender ideology is an issue and you have to have a stance on whether or not women have penises or not, or if Dylan Mulvaney should be allowed to use the woman's bathroom while he's talking about his penis bulging in his pants, uh, it is an issue that people have to take a stance on and be passionate about, yada, yada, yada. And this is the same thing with the Transgender Day of Visibility. It's either you're for it or against it. And doing it on Easter and being, you know, using the religious language um, that the Biden administration used towards it is just to stir the pot even more, right? So this is really just very high quality bait. And of course, they were doing this since 2021. So I think... Again, I do think they planned this out where they said, hey, um, let's look at the calendar and choose a day that will be Easter in the future, but not always, right? Because Easter changes. It depends on the the moon or whatever. I don't know exactly how it, <coughs> how it works, but it's uh, something that changes. So we choose a specific day, a day that will be Easter. We can say, oh, well, we chose it to be March 31st. It has nothing to do with it being Easter. You're, you're just a, you know, a, a conspiracy theorist, right-wing maggot bigot, you know, who, who follows QA9 all day. You're, you're, you gotta, you gotta get with the times, man, or, or, or whatever the hell they're going to say. And they can deflect and do all that stuff. But I do think this whole thing was intentionally done to stir the pot even more, to polarize the culture even more. And gender ideology is one of the many vehicles that the handlers are using to polarize the society that we live in. And you see this with basically everything that they're pushing. And the fact that they let all these people who are fetishists um, take on the identity of trans women and be taken seriously. I mean, that's why Dylan Mulvaney got all the play that he did in um, on TikTok and with Bud Light and all these sorts of things, I really do think it is an operation being pushed onto the people to polarize the culture. And also, you've got the fact that the medicalization that a lot of these people go through in children, very unfortunately, does leave you 
in a lot of cases, completely sterile and definitely completely dependent on the medical system, even more so than you would already be if you're the average American, um, fat and unhealthy and engaging with unhealthy lifestyle habits, like staying inside all day, you're not working now, you're barely drinking any water, you're staying up all night, all these sorts of things, and all those sorts of things will compound with the fact that you're taking exogenous hormones and you're cutting off various parts of your body and hacking them up into things that will never really work properly. Uh, of course, there's all these lies and, you know, all this uh, gaslighting or, or gaslighting that you can actually pass. This will all actually work out, but it won't. The end result of medical transition for a lot of cases is complete dependence on the medical system. Uh, especially if you go for the bottom surgeries and those sorts of things, the amount of revisions you're going to need um, in order to have some sort of functioning um, urinary system is ridiculous. And and again, the whole you know thing if you're taking um, hormone replacement therapy for the rest of your life, those are prescriptions that get filled out for the rest of your life. These are like six to seven figure. Uh, lifetime amounts for each patient so of course there's a financial incentive there as well along with the cultural incentive of creating a more polarized culture right and this is where a lot of this stuff is being done to polarize the culture so we're all divided so the people at, at the top can keep going to the banks and cashing the checks this is really what they want they want all the people under them to be bickering and fighting about all this stuff that i'm, I'm not saying it doesn't matter Right, I mean, gender ideology is something that I, I don't really think matters in the sense that it's something we could abandon really quickly and, and move on from. But the fact that it is an issue in this society, I do think it's worth talking about. But a lot of these things are rather unimportant uh, given the context of if you're an American in, in society, if you are really concerned about what's going on with the children in Gaza, not the fact that you've got children in this country who don't have uh, food security, who don't have stable homes, and the inflation, all these sorts of things. And the solution isn't to just like, hey, we need to send money to these people, or we need to get the government to fix everything. It's creating a culture. It's uh, a bottom up from the individual and that's never going to happen if all the individuals and all the people in the culture are, are fighting each other and at each other's teeth and that's very much an intentional thing a weak sick fat society that's constantly fighting itself is one that's very easy to control and that's why you see all these things going on so it's a really much a connect the dots sort of thing never take anything at face value and always think about why they're telling these stories at this point in the news cycle because the media can't tell you what to think they can only tell you what to think about and they're going to tell you what to think about at certain times so you can be distracted because if you're distracted then you can be controlled and i think with that i'm going to end it here thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed this one and we're going into the outro now thank you for being in the velvet room with joker the fool be sure to like comment and subscribe whether you're listening on youtube Rumble, Odyssey, or Substack, and be sure to subscribe to my Substack, velvetroompublishing.substack.com, to keep up with Machine to Man and all my other projects.